quick video to work on some posture and move that you can do periodically throughout the day just to remind your brain how to stand and sit in good posture. So the first thing I want you to do is just stand up. And then I just want you to stand with your feet comfortably apart. So in this position, we're going to start off by noticing where our hands are next to our body. Is your hand flat against your body? Is your arm rotated in? So your thumbs are pointed more towards your thigh? Or are your hands rotated open? Right. So what we're looking for for optimal position with the shoulder is that your thumbs are facing forward. Your thumbs aren't rotated internally, nor are they rotated externally. What we find is most people's shoulders are internally rotated, and this is due to poor posture. So as you're standing or you're sitting at your desk and you're working or you're sleeping, driving in your car, our shoulders tend to roll forward. So they roll in this forward position because we're typing or we're sleeping like this. Um, so this forward position, which we all notice we have it sometimes, right, and our back gets round in the back, we really need to kind of open up that posture. So the first thing we want to start, rather than just always like arching our back and trying to get in good posture, the first thing I want you to do is just hide your hands by, down by your side. You can use a mirror to use as reference so you get some visual feedback. Thumbs are pinned uh, forward. And what I want you to do now is, if your thumbs are internally rotated at all, all I want you to do is take your thumbs and rotate them out so your palms are facing me. And then I want you to pull your shoulder blades together. So you're not arching your back and lifting your chest to the sky. All we're doing is decreasing the space between your shoulder blades. So think about taking those shoulder blades and pinching them together without moving the spine. So we're just going to hold this here for a few seconds. And I just want you to note how it feels. Do you feel the muscles in the back of your shoulders working? Can you feel the external rotators in the back of your shoulder working to kind of rotate your arms open? What do you feel? Go ahead and relax everything again. Notice where those thumbs are. The goal here is to make sure the thumbs are forward. This means our head of our camera is lined up in our shoulder, which decreases our risk for any type of impingement syndrome. As the shoulder becomes rotated, you decrease the joint spacing here, and a lot of overhead movements um, will lead to a, a, the improper wear and tear of your shoulder, and we get something that is diagnosed as an impingement syndrome. Um, you come into therapy, and all we do is a bunch of exercises to better your posture, better your shoulder positioning. So let's get ahead of that with some preventative posture work or maybe help decrease that impingement syndrome if you're having any of that right now. Okay, so we've done this exercise where you're just kind of pulling the shoulders back and together, thumbs are rotated out. You can do a set of 10 of those, holding those for a few seconds. You can do this two hours in a day. If you are sitting at your desk and your arms are here, you can do the same exercise where your arms are here and then what you do is you just kind of externally rotate your palms out again. So you feel like you're taking the humerus and rotating it back. So we're just holding that shoulder back in this position, pulling the shoulder blades together, but we're not changing our spine angle. It's we're not arching our back, we're not rounding the top of our um, back or our lower back, we're not trying to arch it just to create this angle. We're just creating an awareness in those shoulder blades of where they're supposed to be. We're just saying, hey, you're not supposed to be rounded forward, you're supposed to be pulled back in this position. Perfect. So the next thing we can do, and I find a lot with this demographic, is the head starts to come forward. So the shoulders will round, and in response to that, the curve of the neck gets lost, and the head starts to come forward. So if you were to look at your side angle, um, if somebody could take a picture of you from the side, your ear really wants to be as locked in top of your shoulder as possible. What I find is most people are here. This is from reading. This is from being at the computer. This is from even um, as we start to age and we can't see our screens as much. We don't increase the font, we just get our faces closer. Um, so this is just years of poor posture and that this forward head really causes a lot of tension and ache in the back of the neck because your neck is saying, hey, I don't want your head in that position, this isn't comfortable. So the neck starts to, starts to tense and get really tight in order to kind of shorten those muscles in order to pull your head back over your cervical spine. So simple exercises that you can do, you can do this against the wall, it's one of my favorite ones to do. And I'm going to show you here against my wall. Um, so you can stand directly against the wall, um, and then all you're going to do from this position is my glutes are against the wall, my shoulder blades are against the wall, the back of my head is against the wall, and all I'm doing is I'm pushing my chin a tad, so I'm lowering my chin so my, my head is really flat against the wall, so I'm not looking up and I'm not looking down. I'm going to put my fingers on my chin, and I'm just going to push my chin down a little bit by activating the muscles in the back of my neck, and I'm pushing against the wall. 
Is the one trying to see the grape? All right, and you're holding that for a few seconds and then relax. Doing that again, you're just going to kind of push down your shin a little bit. And then you're going to hold that position where you're pushing against the wall. My shoulder blades are pulled against the wall. You can do that opening up of your arms mo movement here where your thumbs are rotated out and your shoulder blades are pulled together as you're pushing your head against the wall. Good, and then relax. So if you can, we're actually strengthening an isometric um, pattern without doing any movement. And we're strengthening the muscles in the back of the neck so that as they become stronger, it's pulling the head back. We're also re-educating your nerves and your muscles to pull itself back into proper position from all the forward head kind of movement. You can do this sitting at your desk with your head against the back of your chair. You can do this in an airplane when your head's against the headrest. You can do this in your car when your head's against your headrest. So just making sure that the vertebrae are nice and stacked and your neck is not over your shoulder and your neck's not behind you. So you can do about 10 of those, about three to five seconds a piece. So we'll go head pushes. The next thing I want you to do is do some scapular retraction work for your posture. You can do this in your meetings, you can do this in the seated position, you can do this while you're watching TV anytime. But what I find is people's shoulder blades get winged and so they open up. And when the shoulder blades open up, once again, we put ourselves into this position where there's not a lot of room in the front of our shoulders and the joint doesn't have room to move and it causes entanglement issues. The shoulders come forward, the upper back gets rounded. So you'll notice people will have like a really a lot of rounding in their upper back up here. Um, and then that causes the head to come forward. It also causes the pelvis to tuck, right? So our pelvis should be nice and stacked, but as the shoulders come forward, the back rounds, the head comes forward and the pelvis kind of tucks under. Because once again, your body's trying to gain symmetry and if the symmetry is off here, it'll go off here in order to match up, okay? So we wanna make sure that we try to get the symmetry controlled over the entire body because it's a cascading effect of the head forward, the shoulders forward, and then the hips go forward, and then lower back issues, knee issues, ankle issues, hip issues, all right? So what we're gonna do in this exercise is I want you to imagine your two shoulder blades, um, and your shoulder blades are about the size of your hand typically. What I do, want you to do is I want you to imagine your right shoulder blade is getting pulled down toward the earth, okay? So you should feel a little stretch in the top of your shoulder here, which is awesome. So sometimes I just have clients push their hand down their thigh, so like you're pushing down the table. So we're pulling that shoulder blade down. And then I also want you to take that right shoulder blade and I want you to try to tuck it back and down into your left pocket. So imagine the shoulder blade shifting down and pulling in, okay? So the shoulder blades come down and then pull it in toward the side. So I don't just want you to bring it back here and just be like, look, I'm pulling my shoulders back. Mm -mm. This isn't about where you can get your arms. This is about how much control and strength that you can gain in your scapula. If we can get your scapula to stay where it's supposed to in proper posture, the shoulder will align itself up. So let's just worry purely just about what the scapula is doing. So the scapula gets pulled back. So I'm pulling it back, I'm dropping it down away from my ear. And I'm just imagining, it may not happen, but I'm just imagining it connecting into my left pocket. So it's coming from this side of my body and just connecting down to the side of my body. And that will help strengthen that scapula and rotate it back in so that your shoulders are in line and it fits your posture. You can do the same thing on the other side or you can do them both together. So I prefer to do them both together. So I'm just going to now open up my shoulders. I have rotating my hands out. I'm gonna drop my shoulders down like they're going down my spine. The earth is tugging at the bottom of my shoulder blades. I'm creating space between my ear and my shoulder, elongating my neck, and then I'm gonna take my right shoulder blade, it goes into that left pocket, but I'm not gonna go, I tend to see people go, I got it, my left pocket, I got it, my right pocket. <laughs> Don't move your spine. Shoulder blade goes down and back, and then just imagine that right shoulder blade getting pushed into your left jean pocket. Try the left shoulder blade. Imagine it being tucked down, struck down to the earth, and being pulled into your right jean pocket without moving your spine. Your spine should be stacked up. There should be no arching in your lower back and no pressing your chest forward, no movement. And we're just gonna hold this position here for 10 seconds. Just like we did with the head pushes, we're really just re-educating those muscles in order to get them to react and hold you in that position without you actually consciously thinking about it. Plus we're strengthening them at the same time. So relax the shoulders again, and then let's go back. What do we do first? We rotate the hands out, pull the shoulder blades together push our shoulder blades down toward the earth, creating space between our ear and our shoulders. What's the next move? 
Yes, take your right shoulder, put it into your left pocket. Take your left shoulder, put it into your right pocket without moving your spine. So you're not arching your back. We're just creating some tension, some tonicity in that muscle. We're just creating a pathway between your brain and that muscle so that you can fire those muscles. Perfect, and relax. You could do 10 of those for a 10 set rep. I mean, you can do that as frequently throughout the day that you want to. If you feel like your shoulders are starting to ache and the back of your neck starting to ache, just be conscious of that achiness and not rather than stretching it, actually get in there and activate those muscles so that they don't get pulled all day long so they can actually start contracting and you want to shorten those muscles. Okay, um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do um, some chest stretching. So we can stretch out our chest so when our chest becomes tight, our chest muscle attaches to the front of our shoulder, it pulls our shoulders in. So we want to stretch out the front of your pec muscle. And the easiest way to do that is to get to a wall or a door. Um, and then all you're going to do is you're going to put your elbow against the corner of the wall or in a door frame. Elbow goes lower than the shoulder. So you don't want your elbow up high, you want your elbow lower than your shoulder. And then as you're just standing there with your elbow bent at a 90 degree angle, you're just going to kind of rotate your feet away from your arm. So I'm not leaning against my arm trying to create a stretch. I'm using my body as some leverage to rotate through. And then I'm just going to hold this here. This stretch should feel gentle. We never want to push yourself into a stretch. If you make a muscle stretch beyond its capacity, you have these amazing um, things in your muscle called muscle um, stemmal fibers and Golgi tendon. And when they detect an overstretch, they actually become tighter because it thinks your muscle is about to be strained. This is a really good protective mechanism for muscles, but we have to bypass that system by gently stretching and getting your muscle to think that this is the way that it's supposed to be. If we activate those Golgi tendons and muscle stemmal fibers, then it's game over, right? So we have to kind of bypass those by gently stretching. And then we would do the same thing on the other side. You can do this periodically throughout your day. Set in a timer on your phone or maybe an alarm on your computer and make sure you get that done a few times a day and that will really help fix your posture. Thank you.